Hello, welcome to another bowl of Linux soup with Pingcast. Today's item on the menu is making uh, Slackware packages for the Slackware package manager. To do this, we're going to take a source tarball and we're going to build it into a package so that the Slackware package manager can use. Now, some of you may be familiar with source tarballs and that you would untar them, you'd run dot slash configure make, then make install, which is pretty easy to install, but removing or upgrading those packages is very difficult because you can't really uninstall them very well because you don't have that package management system, so I'm going to show you how to make it so you can take a source tarball and you can take advantage of that package manager system on Slackware. So, to begin, I have the Slackware wiki right here, and it has building a package, and we're going to be following this. Here we have a good and decent way, then a very quick way. I recommend doing the good and decent way. See, we're going to configure it, then we're going to use make, but then we're going to make a, a temporary directory for building. Then we're going to install to that directory. We're going to strip out libs and bins to sort of slim it down and gzip the man pages. Uh, and we're going to make a slack dash desk file to have a description for the package. Then we're going to finally build the package. And then we can use install package to install that package. And then you have that package. It's a a built package, you could save it, you could keep it, and if you had to um, reinstall, you'd have those packages already built. So this is good if uh, what you want isn't in Slack builds or the Slackware repositories, but you really want that software. And today uh, we're going to be using Pigeon. Now I've looked in Slack builds, And I've seen some Pigeon stuff in here. But I don't think I see an actual Pigeon package. I'm going to leave this uh, link to building a package in the uh, description box if any of you are interested in giving the uh, wiki a read yourself on how to do this, and I recommend that you do. So we're going to go uh, full screen here on the virtual machine, and we are going to go to, well, we're going to open up Firefox, and we are going to search for Pigeon. Then we're going to download the source code. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, now that that's downloaded, we're going to open up a command prompt and we need to make a build directory. I've got one right here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and clean that out. Okay. Uh, I don't normally recommend just wiping out the directory. You, you might have stuff you want to back up, but I'm okay with just wiping out the directory in this instance. I'm going to make a, another build directory. I'm going to go to Downloads. And see, we have our tarball. This uh, is a .bz2, not a .gz. It's 
a bit different how you untar it. Nonetheless, we're going to move this to our build directory. Uh, tilt the slash build. And if we look here, here's our package. If you, well, I'll just use bz2 first because that's what we have in front of us. X JVF will get your BZ2 unzipped. Uh, that J will needs to be a Z if you're doing with a .tar.gz. What this will do is this will untar it. It'll be verbose, and uh, any file permissions we have will be retained. Now we have a directory. We can just send into this. And we use conf dot slash configure first. Uh, generally, you'll do dot slash configure dash dash prefix equals slash usr dash dash local state dir equals slash var dash dash sysconf dir equals slash etc. You, with this package, I am going to be passing some extra parameters, um, but you will usually want at least these three. You won't always need to add more. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But it'll check, well, it'll do its thing, and then it'll complain. Okay. See, we, it said that we uh, don't have GStreamer and Farsight packages. We could go to Slack Builds and search for those packages. I think they're there, but for time's sake I'll just compile without voice support and video support. So I won't be able to do voice and video. Dash dash disable dash vv will compile without voice and video support. Okay, I don't have the meanwhile development headers. I'm just going to compile without support rather than try to install them, which means I'll have even less functionality. Uh, you may or may not care about uh, meanwhile headers. If you do, then you'll want to install them. If you don't, then you can go ahead and compile without support. It'll make it slimmer, I suppose. <sighs> I'm not going to bother with Bonjour support, so I'm going to disable Vahi. Okay, that command is now done. We're going to type in make. Alright, now that we've used make, we're going to make a directory. mkdir slash temp slash build. And that's going to be a temporary directory that we're going to use for building this package. Now we're going to use make install, but we're going to install to that build directory. So make install Yes, dir, put that in caps, equals, then lowercase, slash temp. Actually, we need to be root. So, su, uh, and make install des dir equals slash temp slash build. Now SU will uh, isn't a hundred percent full login as root. Some of the environmental variables will remain the same. You'll notice with the prompt I got uh, yeah that bash prompt. So I'm once we're done with this, I'm going to uh, do a full login as root with the su dash, but by using su, I 
stayed in the same directory. And I was just able to do the uh, one command rather than uh, navigate back to the directory I was in. that to a full SU and now I have my nice prompt rather than bash 4.1 okay now the wiki says to do strip dash s slash temp build user lib asterisk and that should strip the libs and for the bins we do temp build user bin asterisk. That should strip it. Uh, I guess if they're not there, they're not always there, you can always uh, just look around and uh, look for the libs and bins and strip them that way. Uh, I'm going to cd to the uh, directory. Well, I'll cd in a minute. It also says gzip-9 temp build usr man slash man question mark slash asterisk dot question mark which that's never worked for me but we're gonna cd to temp build see usr there are libs and bins we stripped them already um maybe it's in share okay, here are man and we're going to go into man1 and we will do zip uh, dot slash asterisk there you go now we're going to move one directory up and go to man3 and we're going to do zip everything in the current directory and now our man pages are compressed and we've stripped our libs and bins to make it a bit slimmer. Uh, we're going to go to slash temp slash build. Then we're going to mkdir install to make the install directory go into it. And we are going to create a file called slack dash desk. And this will be a description file for Slackware or our uh, Slack package. Okay, so next is our handy ruler. So if I type in app colon, then that's where the handy ruler wants to begin. So, uh, I guess, uh, one, two, three, four spaces. One, two, three, four, four, five dashes. I think it's handy dash ruler after that. Then, um, it's, uh, 54 dashes after that. And a pipe. And then I think it's 11 app lines. Yes, 11 app lines. And in the first line, we just have the name of the application. Uh, so we'll just call it a pigeon. And a short description, we'll say a instant messaging client. Set of parentheses leave the second line blank, then keep everything within the ruler, uh, make sure you, you use, needs to be on a line that says act, just keep the second line blank and everything you type needs to be within the ruler. So we'll just say uh, instant messaging, uh, instant messaging clients, that can connect to various IAM protocols. And you may or may not want it 
longer than that. It just needs to get the point across, make sure the name, just brief description, I can tell you what it does briefly, and then down at the uh, bottom, on uh, below the second line, you're going to want to have more in-depth description of the package, maybe a little more in-depth than this. And once you've built that, or uh, once you've made that file, go to slash temp slash build, and now we're going to make the package. So we make pkg, and then dot dot slash for one directory up. Now the naming, um, technically you could name it whatever you want, but the proper way to do it is, uh, the proper way to name your package is to have app name, a dash, the version, a dash, the architecture, a dash, and your tag, and then .tgz. So, our app is called Pigeon. Pigeon, I do not remember the version. So we're going to go back to the website. Two point ten point one. So the version is two point ten point one. The architecture, if you don't know your architecture, you can type in uname dash m. Mine is I six eighty six. I six eighty six. Uh an I there. And then the tag is your initials. Usually it's like three letters, but I'll just put PC for pincasts, and then .tgz. Oh, and and uh, the number of times you've built the package. So uh, your initials and the number of times you built the package. So this is the first time we'll say PC1. Now, it says would we like to make this stuff Installs, okay, remove symbolic links. We're going to say yes. Reset directory permissions, no. And then it's going to build our package. Now, there's a way to have it uh, say this for so that way uh, when we make the package, we don't have to answer these, uh, th these two questions. And the way we do this is when we make our package, I'll just put two here for the second time we're going to build this. Uh, when we're making the package, you put dash L, Y, dash C, N, and it'll say yes, no for us. And we can make it again. And it's automatic. It said yes, no automatically for us. And now we have uh, a, a fully built package. We built it twice, so we have two fully built packages. But if you go one directory out, you see we have our two packages. So I'm going to get rid of the build directory. We no longer need that. And I'll just install package kitchen. I'll install the second one. And it'll go ahead and install Pigeon. And now Pigeon is installed. Alright. We go to Network, and look, Pigeon Instant Messaging Client. We can add an account, we have Pigeon. And this package, I do believe, also installs Finch. Uh, Finch, which is the text based version of Pigeon that runs in the command prompt. Some of you may or may not be interested in that. And we will quit. And that's it for this episode. 
of my Slack War Luncheon. I hope you've been enjoying the series, and I'll be back with more cool things uh, to do with your Slack War system. Until then, sit back, have fun, start building packages, uh, get some good practice under your belt, and you won't be limited to Slack builds in the repos anymore. You'll be able to use whatever packages you want. So stay tuned for the next episode.